The relationship between the US and Russia, of course, taking a rather dramatic turn since Donald Trump took office. Now, those heightened tensions over Syria. Could a new Cold War be brewing between the two countries? Let's talk about all of this with Barry Pavel, who is a senior vice president and director at the Brent Scowcroft Centre on International Security at the Atlantic Council. Joining us now from Washington, good to see you. What was your read on what was said today, but also how it was said, the dynamic? I, I had very low expectations for the Moscow meetings, and I think um, the Trump administration, if I'm reading things correctly, achieved their goal. They wanted to deliver a message and a new tone that now they're going to have a little more leverage in places like Syria, and Russia's going to have to react. I think we have sort of a Nixon goes to China, hopefully, type of phenomenon happening where the Russians only respect strength. The Russians did not expect the Obama administration to ever use military force and thereby to get any leverage in Syria in terms of resolving the crisis. Mm. And I think we've seen over history, including the Cold War, when the Russians are dealing with a, a, an administration that has resolved to back up its commitments and to leverage diplomacy, then I think you can get things done. So this is the beginning of a new journey and a new direction for U.S.-Russia relations. Yeah, you know, the Russians, we've all already heard them saying, you know, do not attack the regime again. But, you know, what, what if chemical weapons are used again and the U.S. does respond? What, what are the lines in the sand? What are the risks for the U.S. if they keep saying, you do this, we'll do that, all of a sudden you're in the war? Well, I mean, I think the only purpose of the missile strikes was to deter future chemical weapons use by Assad, I, do, I think if, even if he doesn't use chemical weapons, you're not going to materially change the course of the war. You're not going to really ease humanitarian suffering because of all the other bombs and ways of attacking uh, civilians that Syrian forces use. Um, but I think the, look, my big principle here is the Russians run risks as well. And I think if the U.S. needs to and wants to gain more leverage, we have just as much a right to declare certain zones off limits to Russia right. to deconflict with them as they do. They have risks that we need to make sure that we sort of uh, leverage as well. Exactly. Well, you know, everybody says uh, negotiated settlement. It's the only answer. It's the only way to peace. But what chance that happening? You've got so many stark differences between the major players, the Russians, the Ukrainians, the Americans, the West in general, not to mention a vast group of opposition factions on the ground who have their own agendas. What, what, what do you think the chances are? I mean, I think the, ter the chances in April are very low, but I think this is the beginning of a new dynamic. And I think this is really the first time since the Syria war began that Assad and Putin have had any sort of negative sanctions around them, any sort of influence that wasn't just carte blanche to do whatever they wanted. So now that this potential challenge to them is there on the table, I think it might stimulate um, different dynamics in terms of the political process, the Geneva process, but it's going to take a long time. Let's not be, right. let's not be naive about this. I, I, and, and just quickly, of course, the, 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 the biggest question of all is, is uh, who's the alternative? Who's the candidate to replace Assad, his family, somebody that the Russians will accept, as we said, the Iranians, the international community, for that matter, the Syrian people? Well, that's a big question, and the, the table has to be very inclusive, but I, I, I can't imagine that there's not someone who would still help meet uh, Russia's needs in terms of uh, maintaining their relationship, but who wouldn't have so much blood on their hands like Assad or anybody in Assad's family, 500,000 of his own people killed brutally, hospitals bombed, uh, refugees forced out of the country to flood into Europe. I mean, I think there are, there's got to be a, a couple of candidates here and there that a negotiated process could help unearth. Barry Pavel at the Atlantic Council, uh, great to get your expertise, appreciate it. My pleasure.